Today, we're gonna to be going over nonlinear functions. Now, these are worth about 17 points on your average SAT, so a great concept to know. Our approach is gonna to be to identify nonlinear functions questions. We're gonna break down the question. We're gonna build a formula to solve nonlinear functions questions, and then we're gonna solve a practice question together. So how do you identify these? Well, these questions will give you a function, typically f of x. Now, sometimes you'll see something like a g of x or h of x. They can really use whatever letter they want, but typically you see it in f of x. What you'll need to do is plug your x values into the equation. Now, sometimes they'll give you this thing that looks a little confusing, which is a function within a function. So this you actually say as f of g of x. And an example of this could be like, let's say they tell us g of x equals 3 and they ask us what is f of g of x, and then over here they have like f of x equals 3x plus 5. So we should just take this question one step at a time. So g of x we know is 3, so I can plug in the g of x there, so f of 3. Okay, perfect. And now we can use our f equation that we have over here and plug in this 3, so f of 3. 3 equals 3 times 3. Like I said, we're plugging in our x values, plus 5. And that's going to equal 14. So don't get scared away with these functions within functions. What you're going to want to do is find the answer to the inside function. So in this case, g of x, and then plug that answer to the inside function into our outside function, in this case, f of x. So our formula for these is going to be to identify our function. We're going to plug in our input, which is typically x, and then we're going to find the answer choice that matches your output. So here's an example. Given that f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 divided by x minus 1, what is the value of f of 3? Well, let's write f of 3. And we identified that this is our function. We're plugging in our input, and our input is 3 because that's what they're putting inside the function. So for every x in the equation, we're going to plug in 3. So 2 times 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 3 over 3 minus 1. Now this should be a lot simpler to answer. So we have 18 minus 15 plus 3 over 2. And this is finally going to give us 6 over 2, which equals 3. And these ones actually have an interesting Desmos use case too. So let's do that together. So now that we're in Desmos, let's plug in our original equation, which is going to be 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. And, and this is going to be all over x minus 1. And what we need to do here is a lot of times we can just keep our equation floating like this, but I'm going to name my equation here f of x. And what I've taught you in some other lessons is that Desmos only takes x's and y's, and that is a little bit of a lie because Desmos will also recognize f of x, but outside of those, it's only x and y. So f of x equals this equation. We can see it graphs. Now what I can do is I can plug in f of 3, which is what we're looking for, and it's going to give me our answer right there, equals 3. And so I actually didn't need to do any of that work. Desmos is so powerful. I just plugged in my equation with the f of x denoted, and then I asked it what f of 3 is, and it gave me the answer of equals 3, which we can see is exactly what we found here. So definitely use Desmos on these. It's super powerful and can save you some time or help you check your answer. So good luck on these.